Okay, so it's another episode of the podcast here. Um, lots of stuff going on. Let me see. I was thinking about what I wanted to do this week, and uh, it was Monday, and the, the, the Guggenheim is doing a show called Art in China after 1989 Theater of the World. And they they got a lot of flack. They got a lot of uh, controversy over it because they were showing video footage of art by an artist by the name of uh, two artists by the name of um, Sun Sun Yan and Ping Yu. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it was a video installation piece called Dogs That Cannot Touch Each Other. And uh, it was pretty much a video uh, originally filmed years ago uh, in China uh, by these artists. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, what it is, is it's set up in a gallery. I think it was set up in a museum at the time. And it's a rows of treadmills. And they're facing each other slanted upwards and on each treadmill it's like a like a row going all the way down of a, a whole bunch of treadmills each each facing towards each other in sort of like a triangular uphill kind of kind of way uh down this whole the whole line of this gallery and uh then what what they do is they took they took pit bulls and um i don't know how many there were like seven ten maybe more of them and they set them up across from each other and agitated them and allegedly these are pit bulls that were bred to fight so these are particularly aggressive um, you don't see that completely in the video um, it, some of the dogs get riled up you can tell they're stressed out and they're forced to run at top speed for I believe seven minutes that the video was going for so they uh they were showing this piece then uh, um, amongst some other pieces and um it, it's 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 not too hard to watch um it's sad because we everybody knows how they treat dogs in china and uh and so it, there's not a lot of faith there that the dogs are treated well despite the claims that the dogs were treated well and it was only done for the duration of the video um the fact of the matter is still that the animals were harmed during the making of this alleged art and so um so in addition to that um what was going to happen live was uh it was going to be a three month three month exhibition and uh under a dome, there are supposed to be a number of reptiles and bugs of all shapes and sizes, all confined together in, in, in you know in a single sort of terrarium. And so, for the duration of the show, the, the theme was going to be more about like you know watch as these creatures devour each other. And with a, a local New York uh, pet shop had been on call to uh, to resupply. The terrarium which with what whatever had died and <laughs> and so um i mean even if you could claim even if you could claim that the the dogs weren't necessarily animal abuse because no one was there to see the no one is going to admit to the filming being there and admit that these animals were tortured even though like agitating a dog stressing it out and then forcing it to run at top speed is undoubtedly abusing an animal it's, it's that's you know you try it <laughs> get stressed out and then get forced to run at top speed for seven minutes and see how it feels you know and tell me you don't feel a little abused um, so in addition to that, you know, the Guggenheim was just astounded by the fact that people were making claims of, of animal abuse as if lizards aren't able to feel pain as if, you know, mistreating, uh, you know, putting all, all sorts of reptiles, whether they're compatible to be together in the same, um, environment together or not 
as if that's okay. I mean, you talk to anybody who knows anything about reptiles, and they're gonna they're gonna tell you right off the bat, you have to take careful consideration. You have to take careful consideration about the kind of reptiles you put together, even of the same same species, like male or female, for instance. If you put a male and a female together, you're you're gonna you might have problems. If you put two males together, you might have problems. Sometimes two females aren't good. It depends on the reptile. It depends on the enclosure. And it depends on all sorts of things. So there's all sorts of factors come in come into play here. And and the Guggenheim, they were just 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 confused, just confused by the matter. And you can tell by their statement because on Monday. They released a statement saying, out of concern for the safety of our sit, uh, staff, visitors, and participating artists, we have decided against showing the artworks Dogs That Cannot Touch Each Other, Theater of the World, a case study of transference, 1994, and the upcoming exhibition Art in China after 1989, Theater of the World. So there's a number of the different exhibitions that they were hosting or re-showing um, during this. So although these works have been exhibited in museums in Asia, Europe, and the United States. We regret that threats of violence have made our decision necessary. As an artist institution committed to presenting a multiplicity of voices, we are dismayed that we must withhold works of art. Freedom of expression has always been and will remain a paramount value of the Guggenheim. Freedom of expression. That's where they're going with that. That We've gotten away with it before. We've gotten away with it in the past and in other countries in America. Why can't we get away with it now? This is freedom of expression. So pe people, obviously, it had to be PETA because PETA, uh, the, you know, you can always assume the craziest group is going to be the ones probably doing the craziest shit, right? And so PETA got involved and, um, and you know, that's probably, you know, you can expect threats to happen after that. So their staff was threatened, and and the uh, the museum was threatened, and the artists were threatened. Everybody got threats. And uh, so because of that, because they were worried about the safety, <laughs> it, it fuck the animals, right? Who cares about how animals are treated? Who cares that we are promoting and supporting and making money for artists who hurt animals? to bring awareness to 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 what see and, and 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 there's an overarching problem here there's a bigger problem going on with this and why this is i think a big deal um obviously people got upset petitions were started um torture is an art hashtag started and so people were naturally riled up like they should be about this now it's not right to threaten people's lives that's not the way to go about doing it. Um, but you could expect that reaction um, from some of these installations, some of these pieces. Um, in, the, in the past, and this has made me think more about postmodernism as a whole, because the Guggenheim has to put their foot down, or else they're going to keep losing interest and, and support and, and eventually revenue. They have to put their foot down. And, and, and that means drawing the line of about what is art, freedom of expression, what is expression in, 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 in the form of art. Um, they have to put their foot down and decide and make judgment calls on what should and shouldn't be considered art. And so that lends itself to a whole, whole range of questions here when you think about it. So it's like, what you know, what is the intent of the piece, right? Why, why is the piece being made? You know, it's one thing to, there have been a lot of controversies in the past with artists who have simply filmed animal abuse, um, not advocating for it. They didn't pay for it to happen. They showed up to a place where it happens, like in slaughterhouses, for instance, will film the animal abuse and present that as art, right? Um, but more like as a way to uh, artistic platform as a way to reach people and get the message out about the problems that are going on. So there's that me the, the, there's that method for making art sort of a documentarian sort of approach. Those methods 
uh, have been protested to, and it, and it gets irrational because on one hand, it's like, yeah, you you want people documenting these things, you want people becoming aware of these things, and then the only th way that things are done about them is by bringing them to people's attention, and sometimes graphic content is needed, and so. I'm in full support of an artist who is uh, making people aware about something through, you know, a documentarian sort of way, e even though I don't, wouldn't necessarily consider that automatically art. Um, it can be done and presented in an artful way, um, and, and that could make it more powerful, the message overall. And so there's that kind of raising awareness that I, I, I just, uh, I don't see why people would protest especially if you are for animal rights if you are i mean how could you not be for the you know good treatment of animals i i get i get that that term is is loaded because of the political identities working um you know like peta too you know like you un unintentionally ally yourself with some extremists you know but animal rights is an important thing to acknowledge and how we treat animals um, is an important topic. I've always been a lover of animals, and and so it it, it hurts to see animal abuse because humans need to be better than that. Um, but uh, going back to the topic is is that um, there's no reason why documentation should really be protested as animal abuse, uh, even though it does in the arts. Um, what you have to look at is the intent of the artist and why the piece is being created. These, these, these treadmill machines and the harnesses and the cages that were made um, were all designed to force animals to run. And so the intent of creating this piece was to agitate animals and show the futility of their actions as sort of this representation of it's it, you know it's always results to power it always goes back to power with with, with postmodernism inadvertently um and 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 so of course this is just something about the power of society and the structure and you know blah 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 it's imbalanced it's unfair it's a formula at this point so the intent of the piece the intent of the artist uh what is what it's aiming to do um you know it, it doesn't matter what the reasons are behind doing the work you could be promoting world peace but if you're doing it torturing lambs <laughs> it it doesn't it doesn't matter what your message is if the intent of your work it involves the the suffering of of an innocent animal so um this, this should be basic i i feel like i feel like the reasoning behind this for why it's wrong, why it shouldn't be considered art, is is fairly basic, and and I just and I feel like nothing should be considered art that um, brings the unnecessary torture of something living. I just I mean like if 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 the work of art in its creation or in its execution um, causes unnecessary harm causes suffering like its existence causes suffering i don't think that's a debate i don't know how you could rationally or or logically work your way around something that was created for the intention of suffering it, its sole purpose it was to lessen the quality of whatever life it was affecting while it was going on. And then you take that and, and then say its point is about something else. It's, you know, as if you're not supposed to look at the action that, that you're doing as an artist. Like, so this sort of leads to like what, what postmodernism is, you know, I, uh, um, cause my, my statement, my belief is that this is the end game. This isn't even the end game. This is the, 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 the result of postmodernism. And, um, and, and the, the proof is not only in, and I'll talk about this a bit more later, in that not long after postmodernism post takes off, uh, intellectually, 
in academia is when you start seeing pieces, art pieces, or you know, uh, uh, of animal torture coming up. So it um, and and I started thinking about like why that is more and more closely. Why do you only see animal abuse um, in postmodern art? What? <laughs> Why is that? You know, what what is it about what is it about postmodernism that causes that to happen? Well, that's a fun question because if you talk to post a postmodernist, a real postmodernist about what postmodernism is, if they're following the philosophy of the movement, the only answer that makes sense is either I don't know or whatever you want it to be um, whatever you want it to be is more likely the more uh, correct answer in that there um, because postmodernism as a philosophy sort of makes a couple assumptions right postmodernism is a response to the enlightenment so the modern views all the all, uh, the science uh, the values and, and and you know whenever how everything came together from the enlightenment you know uh, uh, viewing the world as sort of like objective measurable observable reality you know and logic and reason are um, a big part of that and so that was really stressed with with enlightenment values and um, you know it only births science so you know it <laughs> it's got to be doing something right uh, but postmodernism is um, direct counter to that it it says that there are no objective moral values relativism comes out of postmodern belief that um you know we deconstruct the roles of western society um and the powers and the ideologies that have come along with that we want to you know it's its aims were to deconstruct those things um, to sort of show um, their corruption, but also to sort of like level it out with everything else in the world. And so um, so power power relationships and um, are really important in postmodernism. Um, it, it denies that objective reality sort of exists. It's the, it becomes this sort of amorphous thing um, where, where personal truth is personal truth is what's emphasized more than anything. And, and so you're no longer looking outside to, to reality because reality can't be known. Objective truth can't be known, despite the fact that science progressed through the postmodern era giving us amazing achievements. Um, <laughs> it's so stupid. The denial of that, that, um, you know, we can't possibly know objective reality as, as, as we're finding cures to diseases, you know? So, I mean, it's just the problem with, with postmodernism is that it lends itself to a lot of contradictions. And that's really how you know when something is off. If in order to believe it, you have to utterly contradict yourself. You have to Join a movement that is concerned with deconstructing all other movements. <laughs> and, and you get this regurgitation that comes up where it's, um, in art especially, where it's regurgitating the past, taking the past out of context, and then reimagining it and putting it in a new context and, or, or next to things that don't quite fit. Or, or only have like somewhat of a relation to whatever subject they're talking about, and and to sort of um, uh, satirize, to sort of like in 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 irony, you know, uh, being ironic is really really common, and so um, so when you're exposed to sort of all of these. The, the the tenets behind this sort of postmodern philosophy that like there are no core set of values that you need to learn um you sort of create it yourself you know and it's sort of like this redefining the wheel um it it, it leads to nothing 
nothing but nihilism. It really does. Um, it, because it's just, if you have no core values, if, 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 Western, if the Western values have no real value and are only a result of um, power structures that, like, that, that, that are corrupt and, and have no place in the world and shouldn't be, um, what do you believe in then? What are you supposed to believe in? What are you, well, how are you supposed to act? You know, if, if, you, if there's no way to ob objectively measure reality, um, you know, how do we get anywhere in life? And why have we continued to be progressing? You know, progress then wouldn't be possible. And, and the postmodern ideal sort of like refuses to look at the art world or any world that it has entered into as being something where progress is needed. Now, on one hand, you have the sort of critique from the uh, of, of sort of the capitalistic uh, mentality, where like you know, f constant growth is always sort of like demanded, you know, and, and there are problems with that when when it comes to um, economics. I think like you can't have a system that's constantly um, growing, like physically even, which is what happens in business, right? And so, like, if, if your mo if your mode is to constantly be growing physically, then like, if everyone adopts that, then you run out of room really quick, right? And and um, which is something that we're all facing, you know, in in many ways. Aside from that, though, um, if you don't believe in constant personal growth, this is, that's an abstract thing. It's an abstract thing. And when it comes to the arts, it's, it's it, you know even when it's representational, it's abstract. So constant growth. If you don't want to view a system that's dependent upon the mind, you know, intellectual pursuits, which is what the philosophy is involved in with what it's what aesthetics is involved with, and you know, it, it's it's an exercise of the mind, you know, it, as much as it is the technical abilities. Cause you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. To not believe in progress is to defeat the purpose of doing it because progress is of the mind is really just a constant growth, a constant pursuit of trying to know, to trying to know and be better and, and know more. And, and, um, and so that sort of defeats the purpose of it from the very get-go. So there's a lot of contradictions that come up with, with, with postmodernism. Where they were right is that you can you know, is on the infinite interpretations thing, you know, they, they will, the claim is that like, you know, you can infinitely interpret anything or, or you, you'll see, you see this really commonly in, in cultural relativism. And there is some truth to the fact that, you know, okay, so different cultures have their different values, right? And that means um, you have to keep that in mind when you, you know, question the value structure of whether something is inherently better or just inherently different. So because because we have the, the tendency to to um, think that anything different uh, is uh, is scary, right? So um, so don't be afraid of something that's different. You know, just because it's different because it might teach you something. But they take it too far, uh, and they they say that you know because of anything being able to have millions of potential interpretations it it makes whatever the original interpretation might have been um, meaningless or and they say that you could never know the original interpretation of it you know and so you know this also comes out of not believing in human nature because it's one of the biggest things behind postmodernism in in its being anti-science was that human nature doesn't exist, right? It, and so it was part of this whole sort of tabula, tabula rasa, you know, this blank slate sort of mentality that like, um, it's coming out of speculation from philosophers before an age of science. It, it was just guesswork. And so, you know, the more that we are studying evolution, the more that we are studying, the more that science and psychology studies the mind and neuroscience studies the brain and what's happening there is no there's no blank slate there we are chock full of of shit from our evolutionary past and um it, you know it, this is the common thing um that you find in in academia that that you know they view their bodies sort of like 
just these vessels for their heads, their brains, which happen to have been untouched by evolution. You know, they, they refuse to, there's the, the big fear to, to look at our own brain within the context of our evolutionary past. And so um, because, of, because of not wanting to view humans as having a nature, then, um, you know, sort of postmodernism sort of stuffs humanity into, into these um, molds, into this mold of uh, this sort of like gelatinous, ever-changing mold of, of no structure whatsoever, no, no boundaries whatsoever. And, um, and that's not where we need to be as humans. That's not where um, you can't have no rules. There can't be, uh, uh, you know, you have to have some degree of order. You have to have some degree of rules. There has to be some basis for truth or else there's nowhere for you to stand, right? And if there's nowhere to stand, then um, you feel helpless. You feel hopeless, you know, and, and that's, that's that's where the negative comes in as far as fully believing um, in postmodernism. And if you're a representational artist there and you believe in, in postmodernism, like you need to stop drawing <laughs> because if you can't objectively measure the observable world, then proportion doesn't exist. Proportion can't exist. Then uh, an, an inaccurate drawing of the figure looks exactly the same as an accurate drawing of the figure, right? Relationships can't exist. And I don't mean like, like relationships of values, right? No matter what, something is going to be the brightest bright and something else is going to be the darkest dark. And those have a relationship. And that relationship is dictated by your materials and how deep and how bright can your materials go. These things are, so you can measure it um, you can measure it within the limits of your materials um, and, and, and you can accurately capture the relationships of these values, of these proportions until you get something that looks real, right? And why does it look real? Well, because we know what reality looks like. And so when we see something that looks real, what it, that says is that we are seeing something that mimics what? the objective world that we exist in so it, it it becomes very difficult to debate this with um apologists people who are really hardcore into postmodernism because because um it can be whatever you want because it's sort of this amorphous kind of kind of thing especially with aesthetic aesthetics um in in, in the art world um you know, they will tell you what it's not more than anything. And with this thing with Guggenheim, that was the biggest response I saw from people who are, are fans of postmodernism is like, well, this isn't postmodernism. This is something else. And technically, we are not in the age of postmodernism anymore, even though no one can tell you what we're in right now. It doesn't matter who you, t you talk. There are a lot of smart people, allegedly smart people, looking at, you know, trying to figure out what we're in right now but we're in it right now we don't know what we're in because we we don't know what's happening right now the you know the internet has provided uh, this 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 tool that we're using uh, that, that nobody knows what it's doing to us you know or, or or the effects because because how do you measure that so i i we're it, we're in uncharted waters you know, like every movement before it and trying to figure out what it is before it's, before we even fully know, I think is, is, is kind of futile. You know, you're going to have to write it out because there's a lot of things happening and reemerging like representational art. Um, and it's doing so in, in unique ways. Um, but the Guggenheim has to put its foot down and, uh, and, and when it does, um, it'll either it'll either do so as a reflection of its pocketbook because it's going to be losing money, um, or they're going to think that they're invincible, and they're going to die because people um, people just know that torturing animals is wrong, and it takes somebody who really doesn't believe in anything, who really has unquestionable moral grounding, um, 
completely unethical to sort of reason their way around around justifying animal abuse and and if they put their foot down that means they're they're making a judgment about what art is and 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 that changes them you know that that makes them no longer postmodern and so um hey when the age changes you you change with it or you die right and and so um i also wanted to talk about so you see this in the past you see this um you know come up with other artists where so i did a little digging and i found um, a couple artists there are a lot of animal abuse cases um going all the way back you know to 19 you know early 1970s especially um but uh all throughout to, it's to this day you 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 have animals being used and, and tortured um, a couple notable ones I just thought were interesting. Um, Marco Everesti, he's a Danish artist. He did a, an installation piece called Helena, in which he put a number of goldfish in uh, in blenders and provided uh, the viewers with the ability to turn on the blenders if they'd wanted to, um, and and somebody did. Somebody ended up turning on one of the, uh, I think two of the blunders, killing two of the goldfish. Um, and, and it, it actually ended up being taken to court and they, they determined that the, the artist, he wasn't at fault for the, the death and that the goldfish were not tortured. They weren't, uh, they were killed almost instantly. And so, so he was let off, let off the, the case there. But, um, and of course this is another installation that's you know, trying to get people to see about a power dynamic. Again, it's always about the power dynamic, you know, um, but, and, and that the fault isn't his own. It's within the, the power of the person to make that decision, you know, but, but that's sort of, okay. So like, so, so the purpose of an, the artist is to create, everyone sort of assumes that the artist is sort of recreating this world, right? And, and you're, and you're going to the gallery and you're, and you're entering in whatever sort of world that they've created for you. It, it, it's it's assumed that the space is fictional almost. It, it's assumed that the space is sort of have been been uh, is separate from reality. Um, and, and and it's this sort of unspoken thing. Like when no one assumes that when um, you walk into a, a gallery, you're you're going to be be confronted with reality everyone everyone going into a gallery assumes that they're going to be dealing with some sort of recreation of realities or reinterpretation or documentation but not reality itself right and so when you're you're including something living a living thing uh, you know that has the capacity to feel pain right and you present the viewer, the artist goer with a choice, they're not attached to reality in the same way as they would be walking down the street. You know, you go to a movie to, 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 to watch depiction of war, assuming that you're safe from the war you're watching. You know, or it's the same thing, it's the same thing with art. You know, you're going to a, a gallery assuming that, you know, you're, you're in a controlled environment. It, it, again, that it's not the same reality as you know, the things that you are viewing are are not reality. Uh, it, it's it's another recreation to demonstrate something, right? But when you give viewers the choice that like, hey, you know, you choose or not choose, and somebody is going to be curious enough to choose, you know, and it doesn't mean that they would be the same kind of person who would put a fish a fish in the blender and turn it on, right? Uh, and, and, and it's sort of like to use that as an excuse to show that, that humans are this thing that you're trying to prove that they are, this horrible creature that you're trying to prove that they are, um, and, and the, the horrible execute, use of power, you know. Um, it, it's, it's a false result. It's a total it, – it, it's, it's done so with deceit. 
and so the you know and, and so it's a good example of of how how shallow these works are you know as you as you as you look with as you look at um you know other works like this like you 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 just see the same sort of pattern over and over again you get another artist by the name of Guillermo Vargas uh out of Costa Rica he uh okay he exhibited an uh an emaciated dog um it called um he called it you are what you read and it was an emaciated dog chained up in a gallery um and the the weird thing about this um was all the backpedaling that happened is that like at first the gallery was starving a dog right and 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 so it was this this big controversial thing where at first the dog was being changed chained there and starving then the story came out that they um they weren't really starving the dog it had just so happened to be a starving and wounded dog that this artist picked up and that for only three hours during a day during the exhibition was this dog chained to the wall and then there was other stories that the dog died during the exhibition and then further stories that the dog ran away so there are a lot of conflicting stories out of this um you know the only thing that you can trust is that there's horrible footage of this clearly sick animal in need of medical assistance not right chained to a wall in a gallery there's no way to apologize for that there's no way to you know ex explain that away um whatever the other conditions were um the dog should not have been a part of the art because again the intention of the exhibit was to um further the suffering of the dog because it's not taking into account that um you know a sick emaciated dog wants random people walking up to it and pointing at it uh while it while it's it's being chained on a very short lease to to a wall like um you know it, so so any excuses made that like oh well no this dog blah 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 it doesn't matter because it's a sick dog chained to a wall um for public viewing for the pleasure of for for for, for pleasure right because I mean, that's what we assume you go into art in, in a gallery and and because you want to learn something right and and so suddenly um you know sickness and 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 starvation is is um is the subject happening in real time <laughs> it's it's completely completely heartless so uh, there, there's another one and i think i think worth mentioning too that i found and and her name is katinka katinka simon simone's Simone's. Um, she goes by the name of uh, Tinkerbell. Um, this little, this little sociopath. She's she's something special. She um, she has done a number of art pieces where uh, she's just been absolutely brutal to animals. Um, the one of the bigger ones was uh, she um, she had a three year old cat, really beautiful. I think it was a Maine Coon. Uh, she claimed he was depressed, and so she broke his neck and then um, had him skinned and made into a bag that she carried with her, uh, that, that she said she, she made to carry with her so that he could always be with her. You know, it was um, real sadistic, real, real sadistic shit. Like, um, like t taking a hundred hamsters and putting them in tiny transparent balls and, 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 and unleashing them around the gallery. Um, she, has, she has threatened to harm animals to get controversy um she has also like dismembered dismembered baby chicks and 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 hooked them and then hung them up in in, in, in a video installation um th there's just there's just all sorts of terrible things that this this person tinkerbell uh and and she gets a platform she gets a platform by the only people who will give people that I've mentioned, you know, like Damien Hurst, right? You know, who gives that guy a platform? That guy killed two tiger sharks 
amongst other animals just for the purposes of an art installation. Uh, you know, uh, he did he did a piece called The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living. How deep, right? The, the, the subject matter in, in, in postmodern art of this kind is always so painfully shallow. It's Philosophy 101 um, done to such a big magnitude that just your average person has to just be blown away by it because it happens to be ever so slightly deep um, and then extreme at the same time. And so it's it's this awe-inspiring sort of mind-blowing thing, you know, where it's like, you know, it's it's like being a student of philosophy when the Matrix can't come came out. It's being okay, you know, everyone's just being blown away by stuff that you thought about years and years ago, you know. But but it has its uses. Um, at the same time, so with this, it's like, okay, if they weren't real tiger sharks, whatever. Okay, cool. Maybe it, it turns it into something else. But the fact that um, you know Charles Satchi paid for the death of two creatures that are close to being on the um, the list for for endangered species, like you know it, they had to be good sized, which means they had to be older tiger sharks. Uh, you know the, the purpose was for them to be big enough to have, to have been able to eat somebody. So these are tiger sharks that are middle-aged, successful, um, and in an ecosystem that needs them. And, you know, let's just kill them for, for Damien Hurst so they can be stuck in a thing of formaldehyde and, and people can contemplate their, their meaningless existence. You know what I mean? Like, like that's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's adding insult to injury beyond anything else. And so there, there's just, there's no rational excuse. Um, we have strict laws on how to treat animals for filming movies. We have strict laws for, um, well, actually laws that could be more strict as to how, um, what happens to people when they mistreat animals. Um, where are there laws for artists? Why isn't Damien Hirst, why isn't, uh, Charles Satchi, why, why aren't, you know, the galleries and the, the people who are funding these works and the artists who are doing these works, why aren't they being put to task to it, uh, to, to be accountable for their actions? Uh, you know, like, um, these people need help. You know, th this, uh, this girl, Tinkle, Tinkerbell, she needs therapy. She doesn't need a platform for being an artist, uh, because she, she, if you will look at interviews from these people and they, how they, they talk about art, there, there is a complete disconnect. They do not see what they're doing is wrong. There is no remorse. There is, it's just, they're making money and, and who, who cares what they harm along the way. So if you, as an artist, you have a personal responsibility. Uh, the people that, the, the people in the, in the the things and the, the creatures that you affect around you by your work, if, if it's causing harm and, it, and it's causing suffering, it's not right. And that's how we can measure things objectively. Um, if it's creation causes suffering and you can measure suffering, <laughs> you can measure it. You know, when people are in pain, you can, t you know, you can measure whether or not somebody is, is in pain. You can tell, you know, uh, animals, you, you know, it, it, it's if if suffering is the end game, if suffering happens along the way, it's not art. It's not art. Why don't we start there, and we can we can build from that then, because you know morality, despite the fact that you know things have changed over time and some countries treat people worse than others, it doesn't mean that um, that it's okay to do in every country or that it's okay to do at all, because we've discovered. Um, that you have to treat people equally and, and you have to treat people right. And, and um, it doesn't matter who they are and what they believe. And, you know, like you don't, you don't cause the unnecessary suffering of an animal or a person for some ideology that has no value and even value itself. So I think 
postmodernism is definitely on its way out. What's replacing it? I don't know. Um, I don't think it's good to put the stake in the ground and pretend like it's something that anybody can know right now. We'll just see what comes out of it. Um, I, I personally believe that um, emergence, the age of emergence, is, is, is what this is more than anything because of the internet. And um, But what it's going to officially be called, who the fuck knows? I don't care. Um, but uh, it, it's changing, thankfully, away from postmodernism in that people, people are aware that there is a difference in quality of life between you know, one country over another and and relativism has no place if you're talking about measuring the quality of life of people living in various countries that you're claiming are all the same or all should all be equally considered uh, on, on on the same footing as 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 the west um and and so it that's not the case and and the people who are making those claims <laughs> wouldn't go live in half the countries they're they're saying that I should look at it as, as as being the same you know uh, or or equally equally valid in 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 what they view of uh, of life and how they treat people so not all countries act the same not all countries have the same values some values are better than others objectively because of the results that we get from it and so this is this is this uh, same thing this is the result this is um postmodernism playing out in the art world leads to unnecessary suffering of animals uh in part uh and and because of that you have to question the underlying philosophy that leads you there you got and 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 that's what it is so that's sort of my rant this week um, I just thought it was too important to ignore because these are just basic, basic philosophical questions that um, I think more and more people are just aware of and and fed up with. For the amount of people who protested the Guggenheim, I think it's a good sign. I'm glad that they were protested. I'm glad that they refused to show the the things that they um, part of that installation. Because it, it does no one any good, and it's really not doing what it aims to do. Um, it, none of these artists are trying to solve anything. They're just trying to cause out outrage. Um, and it's not saying that you have to try to solve things as an artist, but don't pretend to be. Don't pretend to be, be raising awareness when all you're doing is causing harm. <laughs> because that's not raising awareness. That's just causing more harm. You know, and, 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 it, and it's clear because people are getting distracted by the by by um, by the art itself, and they're forgetting about the message. If if that's happening, you failed as an artist. If people are so upset by how you did it that they're not paying attention to what it's about, it doesn't matter what it's about anymore. You failed. You're not a good artist. And and that's that's you know that's another another point to this is that like Damien Hirst is a hack. He's a hack. And and uh, people were up in arms about this tiger shark, two tiger sharks getting killed. Uh, and, and who gives a shit about, about, um, the, the, the fact that he was playing around with the idea of being unable to truly conceive of what death is if you're alive, like, which is a fascinating subject. It's a fascinating subject. There are so many ways he could have gone, gone about doing it the way that he chose. And everyone's going to think, Oh, he's a fucking shark killer. Good. But, He's not an artist because of that. So uh, that if there's any there's anywhere that I'm going to put my foot down and claiming what somebody is not an artist or that something is not art, it's here. And if you do that, you're not an artist, and what you've done is not art. And and there's no, you know, uh, I don't see how in the interest of you know being a um, responsible human being, anybody could argue otherwise. So. There we go, off of my soapbox, but it's art related and it pisses me off, so. <laughs> but it, it also in a way that like, it ties into everything else that's happening right now. And so, talking about this is, is also important for those, those reasons. All right, well, if you wanna get involved with combating 
art like this, there are plenty of petitions online, petitions to the galleries, petitions against specifically um, this Tinkerbell, um, uh, because she's still doing works. Um, but you know, you can check out the the, the hashtag. Uh, what is it? The, the movement, the petitions that are against the Guggenheim as well. Uh, you could do that, or you could just you know start thinking for yourself and start speaking out against it and and, and um, challenge challenge poor ideas and bad reasoning or a lack of reasoning when you see it wherever you see it and that, that you know if you can do that that's i think more effective so uh get people keep people talking keep people reasoning and um make good art damn it <laughs> talk to you later